Um, good afternoon or um, Erev Tov to the guys joining us from Israel. Um, thank you very much for joining us tonight for the second Cafe Israeli. Um, tonight, uh, we're going to focus on sport inclusions. Um, we're going to meet three different Israeli uh, organizations promoting in different areas uh, sport inclusion. Um, together with Maccabi Israel, uh, we got here Naor Galili with us today. Naor is the CEO of Maccabi Israel. Um, he is a board member in many Israeli uh, organizations and associations such as the Israeli Premier League Basketball League, um, FIBA Euro. Um, let's see that I'm not missing anything, no, sorry. Um, Israel Basketball Association, I will let Naor speak and uh, talk about himself in a minute and then we'll join, um, we'll let any organization to represent themselves, say about what they guys focus on, and we'll please write down at the chat some questions if you guys have, and we'll talk about it with them. Thank you once again for joining us, and now the floor is yours. Uh, hello, uh, good evening, good afternoon uh, from Israel. Um, I apologize because I need to go another meeting. I have a meeting also in Israel in this evening. So I just want to, uh, to bless uh, everybody and especially our friends, uh, the organization that we are supporting Israel. Kab Israel is, uh, would like to be con congratulate Maccabi USA on holding this meeting uh, dedicated to increase the awareness of the integration of people with disability in sport and in all area of life. Kabi Israel uh, is obligated to the integration of people with disability. To this important goal, we recruited many of Maccabi athletes and separate no means. We believe uh, that a stronger and better society is a society that can accommodate the different and the best way of achieving that is through sport. With us here, some of the organization that we joined force on this important task like ETAM, Everyone Can, the Association for Special Games, and the surfing school called Almog. I congratulate them on their important work and achievement in integrity athletes with disability and the community. We are believe in these people. We saw them as a angel of our work, our life, and we support them as the powerful as we can. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. Thank you, Noel. Um, so we got a lot to cover today, so I'll dive in and I will let Yossi Romano um, on behalf of the Is Special Games Association Israel um, to say a few words and introduce us to the organization. I will start with a short video that they asked to share and then I will let Yossi speak. Thank you very much, everybody, and see you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.
של מדינת ישראל באירוע כזה רחוק כל כך מהמדינה, עם הספורטאים היקרים והמיוחדים שלנו, שעשו כל מאמץ כדי להגיע לכאן, לייצג אותנו ואת מדינת ישראל. מרגש, מרגש מאוד. מתרגשת, מאוד, מאוד מתרגשת. התרגשות גדולה להיות פה, אחרי הרבה אימונים בארץ, סוף סוף להיות עם כל המתחרים מכל העולם. עשיתי הכי טוב ממה שאפשר, עבדתי קשה. המדליה הזו היא הוכחה שבספורט, כמו בכל דבר, צריך להשקיע. הרגשה, באמת, זה כאילו עכשיו המראתי לשמיים, כמו סופרמן. הרגשה שלום.אוקיי.יוסי,אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.אוהב.
full inclusion in a way that um, we've never seen in the past. So for instance, if you go to see um, Tel Aviv Marathon, then you would see athletes with uh, various disabilities participating just like everybody else. This is something that was unacceptable in the past and now it's, it's the routine and now it's everybody is almost anticipating that the, the marathon or the open water swimming or uh, cycling, any, any race would include people with um, intellectual and, and physical disabilities. Um, what we're doing most of the time is um, trying to use the sport as a platform to get our athletes to a position that they will be able to see themselves as part of the society. It's very difficult and it, it's understandable, but through sport, the athletes get the self-confidence and uh, the, the physical connection although not relevant in Corona days, but um, there is um, the moment that an athlete would leave the house and participate in an event where ordinary um, athletes would join, he would feel more confident later on to maybe join the army, maybe work somewhere where there are a lot of other people that would otherwise be an intimidating environment for him. So we see our job more than um, a sports organization. We see our job as, um, as a means for these athletes to get included in everyday life. And we'll show you another bit and you can see it in the background, um, the, this presentation of about uh, especially this one, for instance, you can see that for almost everyone, every athlete, we would find some kind of sports um, discipline that he can compete. But he would compete not against someone who is in a completely different level. He would compete with someone, he or she would compete with someone their level. And the difficulty is to find... Um, and to locate from all over the country, those people that otherwise would hide from, you know, from, from the public eye and bring them in and find them competitors in their levels all over the country. At present, we have more than three and a half thousand athletes, uh, active athletes, all age, ages. Um, I think the youngest would be some around eight, the oldest would be around 60. Some of the oldest one have been uh, training with us for the last 15 years or so, uh, especially those on cycling. And you would be amazed how much um, they, um, they see themselves as um, worthy of all these um, you know, rewards that we get, all these ceremonies, they really, they genuinely see themselves as, as athletes from like any other one. And especially when they're going abroad, again, these are the very few, but they feel that they are not different than any other Olympic um, athlete that Israel would send to the regular Olympic games that we are seeing all the time. And for them bringing back medals to Israel is exactly the same as someone like, I don't know, Arik Zahavi or, or Yael Arad bringing home uh, medals. And we achieve through them various, um, um, well, glorious moments, like the one that you've seen before in Brisbane. That's the one that I saw earlier in the presentation and gave me goosebumps. And um, it was one of our athletes that won the 1500 and 1300 meter uh, race. He's a world champion. And um, Tikva was playing in the background and I think everybody was uh, very emotional at that, at that point. And um, yes, well, it is exciting just to think about this. So this is what we're doing most of the time. We are uh, connecting ourselves with organizations both in Israel and around the world, just to try to work out 
various ways to coordinate all kinds of um, activities like the, in the Maccabiya games. In the past, we were not part of it. And then later on, the Maccabi games um, included all of us in, in, the, in the games, both in Israel and abroad. I think last time we participated in the games in, um, in Budapest. It was Maccabi European games and we participated. We, we had great time there. We had, we had about 17, I think, athletes or something like this. And uh, we came from Israel. We get all the, you know, all the cheers and uh, yeah, it was great. So um, this is more or less about us. I'll be happy to answer more questions. Uh, the chat is open, as Shachar said. Yeah. And um, if I remember something else, then I'll, yeah. I'll basically I'll interrupt again, ask for permission. <laughs> Thank you, Yossi. Um, and I want to make things a little bit clear. Um, we got three different organizations. Each of them gonna present themselves. Uh, and then we'll open the conversation for questions. Uh, it will be like a panel. Uh, so feel free to write down questions at the chat uh, and we'll go over them. Um, next, I will put the spotlight on Odael um, on behalf of Eitan, everybody can. Uh, he will explain better about the organization and about their activities and so on. Thank you, Shachal. So hello, everybody. How are you? First of all, I must say I'm really excited to be here with you guys. Uh, it's a great honor and, a, and a really um, just to see Herman and Adele from Boca over here, close friend of us. So I'm, I'm really uh, enthusiastic with that. So thank you so much for the opportunity. My name is Odele. I'm 28 years old. I live here in Giva Time in the center. And eight years ago, and I can't believe that, that I'm saying eight years ago, I finished my army service in a Gozi unit. Anyone know about a Gozi? If you do so, just raise your hand. If you're familiar with the Gozi, Herman, I know you know, All right? Great, so here I see also Yossi. So a Gozi unit is a special unit in the IDF that meant to deal with Hezbollah. Basically, you can measure that like guerrilla warfare unit, learn to camouflage, learn to navigate, learn close combat, and doing very specific and uh, special things. And something you might not familiar with, that in a goes there is specific unit, small unit, that names Dalid, like the letter D, Dalid. And that unit is doing things not here in Israel, things abroad, also to protect the Israel, protect the, the Israeli uh, uh, citizens, Ezrahim, right? Yep. And I got the opportunity to be in that small team. And uh, just to let you know about something very, very important that happened. In August, 2013, my team and I, my close brothers went to a very specific and classified mission that I can't speak much more about it. What I can tell you, we succeeded our mission and finished what we had to do. And on our way back, we got ambushed by Hezbollah terrorists. So shooting, nice party, side bombs and all that. And if you see closer him in, in Zoom, you can see some nice cars from that uh, welcoming night. And that night sounds pretty hard and difficult, but I can tell you this and I will be very, very sharp. That was the best night I ever had. What happened there after a couple of months is you cannot work and study. So I just find myself going to volunteer with people with special needs. And I didn't know what is special needs. You know, I heard about it like everybody, special needs, and but I didn't got familiar with them. And I find myself in a small club, just open the door and see five people. And they didn't spoke at all. Like I'm saying, how are you? And he just repeating, what's the time? And I'm saying again, how are you? And we repeat, what's the time? And going back and forth, the manager of the club told us, welcome autism. Anyone know, heard about autism? Just raise your hand if you do. Autism, yeah, I see. So people with autism have problem with communication. Sometimes they don't even speak. Sometimes they repeat their word every single time. And we just fell in love with those guys. One time we just tied TRX straps at the club over there. You know, it was very popular in Israel. Everybody with the straps at the park. And in the beginning, the, the instructors over there told us that this is not gonna work. He might fall down. He probably gonna buy the TRX. And we, you know, we just said, let's give it a shot to try it out. 
And guess what? Matan got crazy with the TRX. He just came saying that he won TRX from what's the time it's happened to be TRX, TRX, TRX. And we took him to the park after convincing his mother. Uh, so that really, let's give it a try. And people clapping their hands and cheering him up. And Matan just got, you know, amazed with that thing. And long story short, today, after five years, we have more than 550 people with special needs that do professional fitness training like everybody else. Herman Adair, remember we've been in Boca with 250 and now one year been through with the COVID and we are with 550 people that are doing professional fitness training like everybody else. Krav Maga, CrossFit, triathlon, swimming, cycling, dancing, really, you name it. We call it Eitan, everybody can. The word Eitan means strength and power and stabilized. And everybody can, guys, over here, this is the scratch of everybody. Everybody can. It doesn't matter if you're five years old, 80 years old, you can do much more than you think you're able to. And I just want to do like a quick share of a short video that we have that's just going to show off our, uh, some of our activity. So here it is. Zoom and that. So probably some lags, but just a couple seconds and you will see. איתן כל אחד יכול זה ארגון שמעצים, מקדם, מוביל אנשים עם צרכים מיוחדים דרך אימוני כושר מקצועיים. כרגע הוא עומד על אזור 10-15 קילומטר לפתרי תעופה. So what happened that after a couple of months, we did a ton. And in the beginning, you know, there got, our people get more uh, athletic. They're running, they're doing cycling, 10 kilometers, marathon. Uh, you know, it's, it was really good. But we saw people less shouting at the park, less itching themselves, complete more sentences. And we understood. Eitan, the goal of Eitan is to empower people with special needs through professional fitness training. We use the sport as a tool to develop our people. So that means that every one of our participants have his own goals. We are training the trainers how to train people with special needs. They became their mentor. Most of the training is one-on-one -on -one training or small groups training, and they're building a program. What I'm going to do with sport what's my current status and what I want to achieve, what I'm going to do with communication, how I'm going to complete more sentences, behavior and life skills, even find job or drive in a bus. And what happened that on Eitan, University of Haifa and Tel Aviv doing research uh, that want to understand what is the method. And the method combined NLP, if you're familiar with ABA, positive psychology, really, it's an amazing method, but I can say just speak with the level of the eyes, just to understand our people, just to believe with our friends, with and without special needs, to combine all that. This is the, the methodology of Eitan. And just for, the, for conclusion, to speak about like a short, uh, short minute, the business model is pretty unique in nonprofit in Eitan. Around 80%, 75% is revenues from self-incomes. So, training session and lectures that we are doing also at Zoom and in Israel, people all over, all over the world come and train with us and we're doing some lectures. And the other is donation like JDC, Maccabi, uh, Porsche, Nike, and that. And I just want to say that I'm feeling like I'm living the dream. 
I feel that I'm not working from starting to learn what is Excel, how to deal with board members and the vision of 2025. I just feeling like I'm in love with what I'm doing. Um, so just want to make it clear. So guys, thank you very much for listening. And uh, I will be here for any question after uh, everybody gonna speak. Thank you very much, Odae. Thank you. Um, our last guest, uh, I will re represent Yossi, um, another Yossi, the second one. Um, Yossi is uh, the founder of organization called Droim et Ofek Bayam. Uh, basically is uh, in English, it's, you can see the horizon uh, at the sea. Um, and I will let Yossi speak and thank you very much. Go ahead, Yossi. Hi, everybody. Uh, good evening, nice to meet you. I'm Yossi Peretz. I'm a share screen now and I wanted to tell you about me. So this is the social inter enterprise of a municipality of Haifa. Dream became a reality. I am Yossi Pertz, a social entrepreneur. How it all began? Um, it all started when I was 12 years old. I was walking on the beach and I saw two children holding surfboards. They went into the water with the surfboard. I was very curious what they were doing what in the, a few minutes I stood and watched them. While they were in the water, suddenly I saw they were standing on the surfboard and surfing waves. A few weeks later, I returned to same beach, only this time with my own surfboard. I remember this moment very well. It was the moment I got into the water and stood on the surfboards for the first time and served on the wave. It was very powerful, powerful and exciting moment. I will never forget this moment ever. Before the story, I wanted to story of my life. Uh, my parents immigrated from Morocco to Israel and live in a refugee camp. After a while, they were moved to Slime in Kirat Chaim. Death of my older brother from leukemia my twin brother and I are only one year old. The loss of their eldest son created stress and fear at home. Sport have always been a place of escape. My dad is Parkinson disease and became an escape. He is a fisherman because his, of his disability, he could not reach the sea. Determination and perseverance in surfing has shaped who I am today. Wave surfing, a leading sport in extreme sport category, which included all the adrenaline st stimulator, such as speed, high, and in a level of risk. Wave surfing has become a popular hobby and leisure activity for all age. Surfing is planned to make it a debut appearance in the Olympic in Tokyo, Japan, just this year. The decision to step out of my comfort zone, overcome my fear and take action. Perseverance and determination. As the waves get stronger, the stronger ones are re realizing. What wave surfing got to do with it? What makes us feel this way? You get into the water, sometimes you are up, sometimes down, and sometimes floating on the wave, on the water, just like in the real life. Um, academic degrees and the achievements along the way. BA, uh, I learned BA in tax and the payroll accountant constellation, University of Five 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 years. I am a payroll accountant in a public com company 20 years. And the owner and CEO of surfing school, Gal Almog. Gal is my wife, Almog is my daughter, seven years. 
their dream is our vision. Uh, this guy is Ophir. Uh, we, we first met in, uh, um, in Kirchler for business people. We were required to read our dream. Ophir's student unstable. Ophir's dream is to try to surf in the sea. I stopped him and I sent him, please call me. I wanted to take you in the ocean. I take him and I push them to the one wave. And he said, I want about to see everything it's okay. And I see the spark in his eyes. I say to him, please, it's, it's a dream. You are surf. Uh, this, where, this is where the uh, ventures was born. Uh, here I uh, win first place to the social enterprise of the municipality of Haifa. Accessible surfing for uh, physical disabilities people. You can see now is uh, can surf. Surfing school became social enterprise, creating a lecture culture and accessibility accessibility for disabilities people. Establishment of an association to see the horizon at sea. Roim et Ofek Bayam, Ofek is my son. The school is became accessible for disabilities people. Rehabilitation of at risk you. You boarding school and the association for the war on uh, drugs and alcohol. New immigration, immigrant and help for families from low socioeconomic status. Lecture culture for children with special needs. Lecturing personal empowerment, a boarding school in Migdala Emek. Accessible world, uh, ways for activities. Project for, for movement on the way to happiness. You can see here. The path, path to full moment bring happiness. Volunteer and surface with uh, physical disabilities people. Uh, this guy, this lady is uh, blind and uh, disabled. Because of a uh, surgery to correct uh, epilepsy, she uh, cannot stand and now She's a surf, you can see. The deputy director of Jewish Federation of Boston came to vi uh, witness the project. Constellation plane, now uh, this area is uh, to um, give the, you can go to the water. A dream became a reality. This is the last uh, last month. That that's the last month you got the you got yeah. the place for your uh, organization, right? Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Main proposal: community you central empowering you by develop values, achievement, and the success in their lives. General and for disabilities people, people particular, particular by surfing and sport activities. The next steps, WISE found a promote a social enterprise. Yossi, while you're sharing your screen, I will repeat one important sentence about your organization. Is that fine with you? Yeah, it's okay. Um, Yossi, um, um, surfing organization is focusing on promoting um, people with um, 
physically, mentally, and um, disabilities, and also some youth from hard uh, socioeconomic group. Uh, they're bringing them to the beach, uh, helping them to um, surf. And through the sea, you can see how they, um, first of all, uh, they, they have success story out of um, surfing and people that cannot stand, can feel the sea suddenly standing or laying on a surfboard. And also he's using his um, uh, surfing organization to promote um, teenagers and youths from higher socioeconomic group. Um, and, and he's doing it um, for the past two years, you said. Uh, the school, Irgun Poel Kvar Shnatayim, Nachon? Amuta. Amuta. The, the, the organization is working for the past two years and, and his uh, surfing school uh, for the past seven years. Uh, you. Would you like to continue or see? Yeah. We have an association in uh, its infancy. Now without help from the state and we are uh, always looking for uh, partners. I have learned that is uh, possible to integrate family life, career, and sport. A glorious future is better than dreams in the drawer. drawer. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you very much guys for um your um for, for representing your organization um please if you guys got some questions um write them down in the chat and i will go over them um but i will start with asking um Odell. um you had said some uh in few words about uh the method that you guys are promoting your athletes to become a mentors at right. the organization if you can um, talk about yeah, it. Sure. Yeah. You, you mean about uh, the people with special needs that become to trainers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, we call them the Eitanim. Those people are people with autism that we saw like uh, sparking. Uh, you say sparking like nitsots. Mm -hmm. That's the word. That they have, they, that they love sport and they... Although they communication problem, they can really deliver a good training session and they very, you know, they are just uh, so happy with be and, and teach others. So what we are doing is just teaching them how to stand in front of audience. We teaching them uh, um, anatomy. We teaching them what is squat, what is running. And we, what's happening that people all around the world come, people all around the world, come in Israel and then you see Ori or Rotem or Mayan just standing over there and teach, really teach others um, Krav Maga or uh, running or really anything. Although it's now it's Corona time, we're doing this in Zoom. They're now doing also in Zoom and also uh, um, in one-on-one, -on -one, uh, no one-on-one -on -one in uh, front of the sessions. Mm -hmm. And how do, do you feel that those um them becoming a mentors, changing their behavior as well. Is, is that like something else that on the path becoming? Yeah, or definitely, definitely, be, definitely people. And we must say that as people with autism all the time seeing, and also we, I'm sorry about my English, by the way, uh, people with autism, when they were setting goals for those people, even if it's like short goal or small, small goal, and they achieving this goal, they're like so happy and understanding that it's it's there is a process that's going in and they and they go and, and they see a small goal and when it's a it's a process they in the end they become a trainer and then you deliver their suit and their uh, t-shirt of their they're now from tra trainees become a trainer, so this is changing the the stigmas people that now. In the, in the past need help and now they are like giving and teaching uh, changing the whole thing. Perfect, thank you very much. Sure. Yossi Romano. 
how are you doing? We're back to you. Um, so, um, as you said, many of you um, are traveling abroad and outside in Israel, and your athletes is wearing Israeli flag um, around the world representing Israel. Um, how do they feel wearing those, you know, those symbols uh, on behalf of Israel being international athlete? Well, um, I would say exactly what we would feel and multiply this because everything to do with emotions is, um, I would say, is taken to the extreme when you're talking about the, our athletes. And um, excitement for us, say it's my excitement, my 10 level excitement would be five for them. So when they, when they are happy, they are, wow, it's unbelievable. I mean, really, it's um, for them wearing the, the Israeli flag on the, on the chest and, um, and listening to the Tikva, or just entering the stadium with uh, 10,000 people in the crowd. It's, it's unbelievable, really. And as, as you've seen earlier, and I must, I must say this because none of us mentioned it before, I mean, there are really great organizations in Israel, but we have to understand that the, the basis for everything, or for us at least, is the support of our government. I mean, it's not, we all contribute our time and we are all volunteers and everything, but it's, it's, it's the government who is giving us most of the funding. And there are some exceptional people working for the government especially in the welfare um, and, uh, well, all the social workers. We have one representative here. She's quiet and I would not expose her. Um, from Israel, from the welfare uh, branch of our government. And she knows full well what I'm, what I'm talking about, that, that we will not be able to do what we're doing without their support. And I'm not talking about just providing us money. Uh, this is essential, obviously, but they give us the whole umbrella of things that we need. They, they would make sure that when we get to, to the U.S., the U.S. ambassador would come uh, here in Israel and meet us. And then when we go to the U.S., the Israeli ambassador would come and meet us. So it's the foreign minister, would, 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 the ministry would be involved. So everybody is doing everything or their utmost to uh, promote the goals because it, these are not our goals. These are um, Israel's goals. It's, it's goals that are relevant all over the world. And one of the most amazing thing is when you go abroad and you ask me about wearing the Israeli shirt, well, you go abroad and you see athletes from all over the world. And because of the some of them, the level of understanding and, and, and awareness of what's happening around the world is, is very minimal. So they don't see the difference whether they came from, from Africa, whether they came from New Zealand, whether they came from Israel. Athletes are athletes and they're all together. They're exactly the same, irrelevant of their ethnic uh, or, or nationality. There's nothing between them really nothing, no barriers between them. They're just brothers. This is amazing. This is something that you have to be there to understand how pure and, and genuine friendship could be between athletes when they, although they wear the, the, the flag on their, on their shirt, but in, in real life, they don't really care about this. They, what they want to be is, is to meet people from around the world. So it's, it's, as I said, it's multiply when you go abroad. And I'll, I will ask you another one short question. I will use that, that we're already, already talking. Is there any sports that you guys try to adopt into your uh, umbrella of sports um, that we should anticipate? Is there yeah, any? I mean, one thing that you would not associate Israel with is snowshoeing. Well, as you know, this is, uh, this is not exactly the country for snow. However, However being, in one of, yeah, being in one of the um, 
World Games, we came across the United Arab um, delegation for Winter Games, and they were doing snowshoeing. Okay, they have the infrastructure and they have uh, some snow, them, but they practice on sand and they have uh, abundance of sand. So do we. So we started with this and soon after that, we participated in the European Games, Winter Games, and we brought in some medals. You'd be amazed that Israeli athletes are participating in snowshoeing. So you see, you see us uh, training on Tel Aviv Beach or Erzaliya with snowshoe. People are standing and looking at us and taking video clips. Uh, really don't understand what we're doing because this is something that is not relevant to Israel. Well, it is, and especially to our, um, to our athletes because you don't need a lot of balance in this. And it, it's very good for someone who is not um, very, very stable so they can do the, the short distances and everything. So yeah, this is one of the one of the sport disciplines that you, we just brought in. Yeah, thank you. And we have one question from the Czech. I guess it's for you, Yossi, so I'll ask you, I'm sorry. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the Special Olympics, about the, organi the organization, about the sponsor, about, in, in a few words, can you explain about the Special Olympics? Yes, well, Special Olympics is, to begin with, a wonderful organization. We used to partner, to, to be the representative of Special Olympics um, in Israel, our association, until 2017. Then uh, we partnered, we, well, we split for them. Uh, we stayed, we're doing exactly the same thing. Special Olympics Israel exists. Um, they do their stuff, we're doing our stuff. We joined um, another world organization. It's called Virtus. That's the, um, they're dealing with um, athletes on the higher level of um, sports. So they're almost professionals. As I said, those that participate abroad are really, really the very best athletes. It's a bit different than Special Olympics, but both organizations really do the utmost to promote the athletes, each one on his own, uh, own way. I think Special Olympics is uh, more familiar in the US. It originated in the US with the Kennedy family. Um, um, the, um, that kind of, uh, well, when we've been to the US, I think Michelle Obama was the chair of the games. So that gave it a lot of promotion. So probably in the US, many, many people know about this. But I must say that only in Israel, participating in, in sports, whether it would be in Special Olympics or um, in our organization, in the Israeli Special Games Association, it's for free. We do not charge money for this. And that's, that's a very, very big difference. It is genuinely accessible for everyone. So if you think about a country like Norway, and everybody is aware that the the welfare in Norway is amazing, but they, those who do not have the money would not send their kids to, to train for Special Olympics or for Vitos. In Israel, whether you are uh, coming from a rich family or from a poor family, whether you live in a, in a village in the north or in the south, whether you are Bedouin, whether you are um, Arab, Jewish, Muslim, whatever, everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome. Again, like with the government, there's no, there's no discrimination. It's open, it's for free. And this is the main thing, you make it accessible. Uh, this is something that does not happen abroad. And it's, it's a bit sad because when you think about it, all the um, OECD countries can easily afford this, but they don't, while Israel, which is not a very rich country, is enabling each and every one of uh, the um, citizens with intellectual and physical disability get various opportunities in sports field that would cost a fortune, but that it's for free. And this is, I think, the amazing thing that we are only enhancing, but it's, this is unique to Israel, I must say this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
I will put your thing on a Spotify and I will I don't know the others. <laughs> um, Yossi, do you want to share with us what is the future plans for your organization? What are you guys thinking about? What is your dream? How do you want to see your organization in the next few years? Um, well, first and foremost, we want this just COVID-19 <laughs> COVID to be behind us because it's been a terrible year for our athletes. You see, each, each one of us had to sacrifice something, but the sensibility, uh, well, sensitivity, sorry, sensitivity for people with special needs during this, the last year, um, made it impossible for them to, to leave their, their regular framework and to communicate with other people. So what we would find annoying, they would find distressing at the moment because they are literally prevented from, from um, leaving their places and, and doing sports or whatever, go to work. And um, so for us, I think what we will have to do in the, well, next probably two years is to try to bring back everybody to the level that was pre-COVID-19 because there is a regression. There, there's no doubt about it. And, and we speak with our athletes. We see them through Zoom and everything. It's not the same. I'm not talking about fitness. I'm talking about the mental stress. This is a population that suffered dearly during the last year. And I don't think that there's a lot uh, enough attention to the damage caused to them. And I don't think it's been treated rightly because uh, they, they need help more than anybody else in that sense. Not a lot, just to allow them to, to get more freedom. Um, so yeah, this is, this is basically the, the, I mean, it's sad, but the only thing we want to do is to go back to normal and that will take us the best part of the two years, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I guess all of us can share this thought about going back to normal and I know um, things getting better in Israel. Um, Odell and Yossi Peretz, um, do you all guys want to share with us what is the future plans? Uh, how do you want to see your organization in about a few years? What is the dream? Oh, there sure. go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, number one is to give the opportunity to everybody, really, to make sure that everybody can. And by meaning that, we are speaking about Israel and we're speaking also about USA to give the method also abroad. So, uh, things are happening in Boca Raton, maybe in New York and to just build the method that could be duplicated. Number two is to have our own home, the Itan heart. People with and without disabilities could train together to come and share and to work. So the Itan heart. And uh, just one more thing is changing a bit the stigma about people with special needs. More French, more, um, uh, how you say, uh, Yossi, um, Unified, unified, uh, unified training. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Sorry. So unified training and just to people make sure that, okay, I'm doing sport. I can do sport with people with disabilities. No problem. Just the awareness of that. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Dan. Thank you. Yossi Perez, do you want to share? You're on mute. All right. And unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh... Can I can say it in Hebrew? Yes, it's okay. Yeah. I think it's important to go back to the regular, as we said, after the corona. And in addition to that, it's very difficult because I'm also in a community. So, in שנה וחצי היא בהתנדבות מלאה, זאת אומרת, זה רק היה הקמה, וזה מאוד מאוד מספק, התחושה של לראות את הניצוץ בעיניים, גורם לי להרגיש כל פעם המון המון סיפוק וגם הרבה כוחות לשתף, ליצור את כל ה... 
מתנדבים ולאסוף אותם יחד ולראות את הנקודות אור הבאות ולעמוד באתגר הזה של לגרום לכולם, כולם, כולם שווים, לתת את התחושה הזו שכולם יכולים הכל ושלא יגבילו גם נוער בסיכון שיש לו תקרת זכוכית שכמו שלי קרה בשכונה שגדלתי בה, אז זו שליחות עבורי, אני מרגיש סיפוק כל רגע, כאילו אני לא עובד, כמו שאמר אודל, אני לא עובד. אני פשוט נהנה כל רגע ומרגיש ש... כוח אדיר. תודה, אני... אני אפרש את זה באנגלית בכמה מילים. אז יוסי אמר שהאורגניזציה שלו היא מאוד חדשה, היא עובדת כבר כמה שנים וחצי. And he, he has, as Odell said earlier, he feels like he's not going to work. He feels like that he is going to the place he likes, the place that he wants to be. Um, and he just want to see all of his volunteers and all the organization um, going live and happening and see back all those people smiling when they go into the sea, surfing for the first time um, and, and enjoy The, 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 what the organization meant to be. Um, I want to say a few words and, and then uh, I will leave the conversation open uh, for an after party or anything else you guys wish to do. Um, I would like to thank you all for joining us. Um, as uh, some of you know, uh, I'm, I'm deeply connected with this uh, topic um, from home. Um, and, and I think the sport inclusion is so important for us. Uh, it's so important for our society. It's important for us as, as a human being. And sports is what Maccabi is uh, trying to do uh, and educate through sports. And we are thankful for you joining us tonight, um, both the guests and you guys for helping me um, to speak about it. Um, I can say that tomorrow we're going to have another uh, show, um, sports show, um, one of our shows. You can look at it in our social media and also uh, Facebook uh, and our website. And everything that we discussed today, uh, I'm going to share with you by email. Um, and you will be able to contact with uh, our panelists and uh, the organization through the social media and emails. Thank you once again for joining us and have a great evening or afternoon. Thank you.